Okay, now let's continue on our journey on how to solve the re-exam set in BBSTA5 statistics from 2018. The exam set we are now looking at, or the exercise we're now looking at to, to solve is this one here, where we want to look at the average body and brain weights of uh, mammals. And it also has a list of uh, some a data set in data mammals that we should uh, investigate. There are some uh, elements we should uh, go through here. So let's open up our document in our studio and see how far we got. So the previous lines were described uh, in an earlier video and now we can cont continue uh, with uh, the question two in the exam set. Average body and brain weights. So first we should find the five animals with the largest average body weight. And we have the data that we should uh, load. So let's see if we can uh, figure out how the data are stored and what we can do with it. So we examine it was here. We have the data folder and there's this mammals CSV file. And the data are stored here in a format very similar to the format used in the first part. Uh, it seems like we have a name of the species and then a tabulator, a value for the body weight and then a value for the brain weight. So it should be rather easy to, to load the data. Uh, data using uh, read our read uh, the limb and specify that the delimiters are tabulators. Oh, I think it's just named tabs. So we store the data inside the mammals uh, variable. And it should be the mammals.csv and the delimiter should be our tabulator. Then see what comes out of this. We have uh, three columns in the data we have read, the species, the body and the brain. And to get rid of this message, we can take this up here and use this input for the call type um, declaration here. And if we push Control I multiple times, uh, our studio will indent this for, for us. So now we have loaded the mammal data set. It resides up here, and it seems to, to look okay. Um, one thing to consider is what the actually columns in this data set uh, represents. Let's see if that's actually is written. Um, in the in the exercise, um, it just states that there are some data about the average body and brain weight. So let's see how this uh, looks like. Um, okay. For the 2A, we should find the five animals with the largest average body weight. So, if we haven't done that, okay, we already have that. Um, sort the uh, animals by their body weight. And 
we should find the five largest or heaviest animals and according to their body weight and let's see if we get something similar to what we have here this is of course not uh, the real um, output that should be but it's the output should be specified like this and I also think I want to sort it accordingly to, to the body weight so I can use a range function for that and want to arrange it according to the body weight that might be the wrong way around so I'll use this uh, descending uh, function over here so I will sort it the opposite way around so we have the two elephants with the largest uh, bodies and then uh, go down from here um, and if we add this uh, top in well they're already sorted by the body size then we get it here then what we can see here is that we have uh, five animals with uh, relatively large bodies the cow for instance horse giraffe and the elephants and so we need to make a short description um, of how we have done that using the arrange method so we sort the animals by the body weight and then only show the top five according to the body weight so that's a rather short description of, of this exercise um, like this and finally we need to in 2b count the number of man animals that fulfill some uh, property oh. so let's, let's see if we can make sense of this um, so we take the mammals data set um, and add a new column um, brain percentage and we set that value to be the value of the weight of the brain divided by the weight of the, the body and we might consider what we have here in this case if it should be a percentage we should multiply by a hundred and this makes no sense at all for some of the um, species in inside this data set for instance for the arctic fall or fox we have a brain that if the body and brain are measured in the same units are 13 times as big as uh, weighs 13 times as much as the entire body so there must be some uh, reason why this is the case um, and we need to figure out that out why that um, we can try to open a, a new window here um, I'll take Fox and see if we can get some information about the, the size of, of that uh, animal it states the weight of, of this animal is on the order of 3 kilos uh, that makes sense with this value and let's see if we can figure out what the uh, value of this uh, of its brain is So let's see what this says here. 
I'm just searching for the brain and then see if we can uh, can find the next one. Hmm. Okay, I don't know if if I can find the uh, the right value here. Um, let's see if we can find one of the other animals we're looking at. Um, the cow. It's just to get the. Okay, here it states that the brain of a cow is only 0.1% of the body weight. So, we need to adjust this number by, by something, maybe a factor of a thousand, which makes sense if the body weight is in kilos and the brain weight is in uh, gram. So, we need to before we value these uh, numbers together, then we need to convert it to the same units. So the brain will be, uh, the value of the brain weight will be divided by a thousand to convert it to kilos and then divide with the body weight and multiply by a hundred. So we can see here now the cow has a value of uh, close to 0.1%. And what was asked about? Then we should count the number of mammals that on average have a brain weight, which is larger than 1% of the body weight. So now we have a brain percentage here. And just to get an idea of how this looks like, uh, we can arrange it by that. I'll make it descending uh, here. So first we have some of the animals with the largest brains compared to the, the body weights, so the ground squirrel and so on. Um, and around here, the, the Pathos monkey, we get below 1%. And the 1% that was the limit we should use according to the exercise. So we can count and we want to look at whether the brain percentage is above uh, one or not. So what we get out of this is that 21 of our mammals have an average brain uh, percentage above one. We could do this in a different way, but um, I think that's uh, okay for to do so. It might actually be a bit cleaner if we make a new uh, column that has the value of the large brain, or is denoted large brain, brain percentage, and require that to be above one. Then we get a better name down here. So um, now we have the, the numbers. Um, it's just uh, get a through hand, we could do the same thing over here. And we need to comment on, on these values uh, somehow, uh, on how we found the values and so on, by looking at the data set. Uh, it is noted that uh, units of the body brain weight must be in kilogram and gram. Uh, 
respectively. Respectively. Um, when comparing values to um, expected So now we have stated that, how we interpret uh, these uh, numbers. And we need to convert um, the brain weight to kilos um, before we can calculate this uh, percentage. Okay. Um Then we add a new value to the data frame, uh, which indicates whether the animal has a brain larger than 1% of its body weight. Finally, we count uh, the number of animals with a large brain is counted. And I conclude the question with, uh, or the answer, with a one-line summary of, of what we have found. Uh, it can often be a good practice to, to do so. Um, and we can do something similar here in, in 2B. Uh, From the data set, we Find that the elephants are the largest animals according to their average body. Wait. So now we uh, completed answering exercise two. Let's see how it uh, looks like. Uh, for some reason it doesn't open. I'll just open it here. So we have found that the three animals with the largest body weight uh, are these ones. And we also have counted the number of mam mammals that have a uh, large brain, larger than 1%, using the code down here. And it's not just enough to provide an output from R. Often it's a really good idea to make a short comment on exactly what you have found based on the output from R. So you show that you're actually able to, to interpret the output.
Oh, there's a spelling error here. Let's just fix that and then. Uh, um, So that was how to solve the exercise or the second exercise in the re-exam set from 2018. Hope you got something out of it.